They have to manage to reduce this one. Change the pack that. I've taught for about 11 years oh. and it's something that um, I have to do a lot so it's kind of like uh, we call it coaching okay. you know so we're teachers coaching. but we're also coaches right yeah. so we try to help students stay motivated and I can talk about in terms of language because I know a lot of your listeners are listening to learn English yeah 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 and I think that with language um, one strategy I think that we could practice is to imagine yourself successful. When you think about yourself two years from now, three years from now, 10 years from now, do you imagine yourself speaking English? Oh. Some people don't have a degree in English, right? And they speak very well, oh, yeah. right? So it has nothing to do with the certificate. The certificate doesn't really matter. <laughs> the certificate is just kind of for you to show other people, for you to get a job or to make yourself feel good. But, uh, your own skills, right? Your ability to communicate or your ability to do something well, that is the proof, right? Very lucky because my wife is a relationship coach. Oh. So she actually teaches people how to have wow. a healthy relationship. Oh. So I'm very lucky. Yeah. <laughs> I asked the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sometimes people who do admit it, people don't know how to react. Mm -hmm. People don't know how to help them yeah. they don't know what words to use mm. when people actually have depression mm. because a lot of times i see my parents or older folks mm. they will say just get over it <laughs> it's like what's wrong with you you know or my parents will talk about like you know when i was younger you know what i had to do <laughs> my life was so much more yeah, difficult yeah, yeah, than yeah. you <laughs> so just get over it your problem means nothing you know mm. and then so people don't ask for help because of that mm. you know First one is to listen. Only listen. Don't talk. Mm. Don't tell them it's going to be okay. It's mm. not going to be okay. We don't know that. <laughs> mm -hmm. How do you know it's going to be okay? Yeah. You don't know. Get over it, right? Mm. That's like telling someone who's hungry, stop being hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop being hungry. Well, I haven't ate food. Stop. Don't worry about that. Just don't be hungry. <laughs> yeah. that, does, that doesn't take away the hunger. I need to eat something, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. បាទសូមគោរពជ្រាបសួរលោកបងប្អូនចេះទាំងអស់គ្នាដែលក្នុងឆានលដេកជារៀនពីសងលេខទាំងអស់គ្នាបាទអឺ <coughs> ការតស៊ូនិយាយពីទំនោះស្រាយក្នុងគ្រួសារនិយាយពីការទុបកំហឹងអីយើងដើមអញ្ចឹងណាអញ្ចឹងវាទៅនេះគឺជាការសន្ត
the Buddha has so much knowledge, mm -hmm. so many ideas, but he only shared one idea with us before he passed away. And he said, don't be negligent, right? Oh. Be diligent, apamada, right? Mm. Make a determination. Don't be late. Be motivated. Go for it, we can even say, you know? The Buddha was giving us a motivational talk. Great. And after that, he was gone. Mm. So we have this beautiful teaching by the Buddha himself who says, don't give up. Like, you can do it. Go for it. He says, if you don't, the next thing he says is you'll regret. We don't want to have regrets. As a Buddhist monk, I'm with a lot of people when they're about to die. And so many regrets when people are about to die. So let's not wait until we die. Let's do what we need to do. Let's be heedful. And let's follow the Buddha's advice and be motivated and do what needs to be done. Okay, great. Um, can you do translation? <laughs> um, on translator? <laughs> uh, I think... Um, up, uh, I, so, uh, you have a, can you do translation to Kumai? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I wish. Just kidding. Just kidding. So, do you have any idea uh, with the Venerable Monk or did you do translation? Or? I guess, yeah, I would like to pay my mm -hmm. uh, respect to Venerable mm -hmm. and, yeah, my best regard to uh, Chris and uh, Monk Jim Nan. Um, yeah, like uh, you have heard about uh, Venerable uh, Sanatha uh, Vihari. I share a lot of points about the uh, the Buddha's teaching, yeah, based on the the last speech of the Buddha, uh, that is about Pamata and Abhamata. Yeah, so great. yeah, that is the uh, when when uh, the Buddha uh, when uh, the Venerable said about this point, uh, the point that comes into my mind is that mm -hmm. uh, the quitter never win and the winner never quit. Oh. So uh, when you uh, although I because. Uh, life is fluctuated. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. So, uh, one more thing that is important is keeping in mind that uh, we still hopeful, be hopeful, so then don't okay. quit, don't mm -hmm. give up, something like this. So, this is the way uh, of the Buddha go to Nibbana as well. Because if uh, he disappointed in life, like uh, uh, hopeless, so he stop, he will never reach the uh, Nibbana. Mm. That's why uh, we all uh, also like that. Uh, we all are human beings, so we face bad thing and good thing in life, uh, tension, happiness. But uh, one thing that the people try to attach too much is that the overreaction to the problem they uh, they face, they attach to, they happen, and when they, uh, they they face the encounter, that's why uh, we have to be hopeful a lot of times and don't give up. You know, mm. don't give up, and try to keep going, keep doing. Although it is a small thing, step by step, you can uh, be successful. Uh, before Chris, uh, before the Buddha uh, but in Nibbana, or we can say passed away, he said, it seemed like all the teaching he teach, maybe you forget it, or okay, so before I die, before I go, mm. I just give you last word, mm. don't be careless, mm -hmm. don't be careless and keep going. Mm -hmm. Maybe there are many teachings of the Buddha, but maybe you forget it, but mm -hmm. before I go, just remember, mm -hmm. don't be careless and keep going. Mm -hmm. Maybe something like this or... Yes, 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 yes. That's what it means. Okay, thank you. And Chris, <laughs> is there any ideas to give uh, to people who listen? Yes, absolutely. Have you ever been hopeless or want to give up? Yes, <laughs> it's, it's definitely a practice, <laughs> okay. right? And like, uh, it's yeah. something that we have to train ourselves to do over and over and over again. And uh, I can speak from the perspective of a teacher. Mm -hmm. So I've taught for about 11 years. Oh. And it's something that um, I have to do a lot. So it's kind of like uh, we call it coaching, okay. you know, so we're teachers, coaching. but we're also coaches, right? Yeah. So we're trying to help students stay motivated. And I can talk about in terms of language, because I know a lot of your listeners are listening to learn English. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think that with language, um, one strategy I think that we could practice is to imagine yourself successful. Yeah. In the future oh. I think that's a very important practice and it's yeah. quite simple and it's very aligned with you know a daily practice like meditation is just to imagine yourself in the future Ooh. being able to speak English oh <laughs> right? that's very important right yeah, so yeah, yeah. when you think about yourself two years from now three years from now ten years from now do you imagine yourself speaking English oh right so Ooh. like you have to imagine that feel okay. comfortable with that image right and not just like um, like a, a simple picture like 
what are you doing? Who are you talking to? How does it feel, right, uh-huh. to speak English in the future? Right. So it's a very simple practice. Mm. And I think um, number two is, you know, beyond just thinking about yourself in the future, I think in the present, I think it's really important to to have community, mm-hmm. to have people around you who support you and make you feel safe, especially with language teaching, because it's scary, <laughs> right? So then to have people that you can make mistakes with, and a teacher doesn't have to be uh, a native speaker from, you know, England or America. It could be your friends. It could be other students who take learning seriously and encourage you. Like, we need those people to push us, right? So then do that and then find joy, I think. Find joy in, you know, little victories with language. You know, maybe you learned one new expression, uh-huh. like... Uh, Bante Kim Hong learned yeah, a new yeah, expression, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, get the yeah. show on the road. Yeah, get the show on the yeah. road. Yeah, and he's been using that. And Ooh. like, you know, every time he says it, we smile. You know? <laughs> and that's just, that, that simple feeling is like a very good motivator, okay. right? Just that little tiny victory of like, oh, I got one expression, correct? <laughs> okay. And then just use that to keep going and keep going. These little simple victories that you should celebrate okay. every day. That as a Ken Warner. Thank you, Christian. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pante, uh, the, in Cambodia, there are many students they want to learn, but they feel like they are poor mm-hmm. because uh, they are too poor to learn. Like um, maybe they have no standard school, like professional school, but they really want to know. They, they really want to learn, but they, they feel hopeless, like I am poor. So maybe I cannot learn English or I cannot mm-hmm. go on. or as you know, right, in Cambodian yeah. people, when we are studying and then, ah, it's time to work, <laughs> stomach first, no study. Yeah. So they feel like, still think I'm poor, I cannot learn, I'm poor, I cannot learn. And, yeah. and some students, when they are young, they have no opportunity to study. Yeah. But when they get married, have children, their lifestyle is better. They really want to learn, but they have children. Yeah. 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 So, uh, Pante, do you have any uh, dharma to encourage them, like, the poor people, this thing they cannot learn. And some students, some people, they have children, they think that they are busy, they cannot learn. Yeah. So what can we do? Yes, uh, we can all learn. Learning looks very different. You know, sometimes uh, it's not only about formal education, but there's a lot of informal education True. that we learn. Like coming here to Cambodia, learning how people say hello to each other or interact the customs and the different kind of way things are done this kind of more uh like intuitive learning right interacting with people that's also a form of learning it doesn't have to be Uh in books so sometimes we think learning has to be at a school has to come from a book has to come from a teacher but you can learn so much even through your own experience learning art learning craftsmanship building things fixing things i think there's too much focus on this very formal academic kind of western style learning and we forget about the other kind of learning like the learning you get from your parents our parents teach us so much how to be a good person right also the monks they teach us how to be a good person nature teaches us we learn from looking around looking at the animals also but um i understand why people focus on the academic because they want a better life right they usually study academics or they study a different language because they want to make more money to provide uh for their family, but now we have such a beautiful, beautiful thing called the internet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, basically, if you can afford to go on the internet, you can learn anything you want. You don't even need to go to a school. You don't need a diploma to speak English. Some people have many diplomas and their English is terrible, <laughs> right? Master's degree in English, but when you speak to them, it's not good. Some people don't have a degree in English, right? And they speak very well. Oh, yeah. Right? So it has nothing to do with the certificate. The certificate doesn't really matter. The certificate <laughs> is just kind of for you to show other people, for you to get a job or to make yourself feel good. But uh, your own skills, right? Your ability to communicate or your ability to do something well, that is the proof, right? You are your own proof. You don't need some external validation, right? I think young people always want external validation. That's why they need likes, they need comments, they need shares, they need all these things. They want other people to tell them how great they are. (laughs) 
but you don't need other people. You know for yourself what level you're at, right? And you should know that little by little, uh, you're going to get better. So my advice to those people is that if you want to learn, use the internet. Uh. I mean, there's things like uh, on YouTube and on TikTok and on Instagram. So many people are teaching for free, right? Like people yeah, are teaching for free. Even if you want to learn Buddhism, you can go to suttacentral.net and the entire Tipitaka is there in English, Spanish, in Thai, in uh, Pali, in so many languages. You can learn the teachings of the Buddha for free. So many monks are giving Dhamma talks on YouTube. You can listen to the teachings of the Buddha. So you can learn on your own at your own pace and it can look very different. You don't need uh, to go to a school. You don't need a formal education to be a smart person or a wise person, right? Mm. Uh, so I just want to give that encouragement for people really to take this opportunity of uh, the internet and also not to seek external validation, right? I think so much suffering in this world happens because we want someone else to approve or to say, oh, you're good, your English is good or your math is good or your history is good. You don't need other people praising you, right? You know mm. for yourself how much you know and be confident in your own ability even if you only know three words in a language right you have to be confident in using those words at least i know three right <laughs> these three i feel good so yes. i think that's my advice that i give okay. people I, I i i i get the point really important say um you don't have to wait for the, the other people to praise you mm -hmm. you have to know your level right mm -hmm. this is very meaningful like ពេលយើងធ្វើអីក៏ដោយយើងត្រូវដឹងថាកុំចាំគេមកមកលើកទឹកចិត្តយើងតែអូណាអីអស់ចាបែងនឹងបាច់ចាំចាំ you have any encouragement to uh, people who are poor yes. and yes. want to keep going yes absolutely um, so in los angeles where i taught high mm. school Mm -hmm. um, we we teach in a very uh, we say like a rough neighborhood, mm -hmm. meaning that uh, a lot of people are low income, mm -hmm. and it's very difficult for them because a lot of my students also work sometimes mm -hmm. two jobs mm -hmm. and they also try to study, and it's very difficult for them um, in Los Angeles where I teach. And uh, something I could add because there's a lot of good advice already mm -hmm. um, is um, pay attention to what mm -hmm. you're telling yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, we we need to, I guess, look at um, how you perceive yourself. So I have a s students who feel, you know, I'm poor. Mm -hmm. um, I have a difficult life. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have um, I don't have like a, a place to do it. I don't have, uh, you know, the money. I don't have like nice books. I don't have <laughs> a, a you know, a beautiful cafe where I could mm -hmm. study, you know, and they tell themselves this and then they don't try because mm -hmm. they feel like um, they're limited. Um, and I'm not saying that what they're going through isn't real because, you know, if you have to work, that's real, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's actually uh, something that we have to actually uh, do. But if we feel like, hey, you know what? I have all these challenges, but I can do it. You know, I, I can do it. Like, I, I, I feel like, you know, I could find a way. And, you know, that's um, adding to what Bante uh, has said about the Internet, right? There are a lot of resources. There are a lot of free resources. There are teachers who teach for free. And there, there are ways that we could overcome, you know, those things. Maybe they're not always the best as, you know, people who have money. But there are ways if we believe that we can do it. You know, we'll find some ways to do it. Mm -hmm. But also on top of that, I do want to um, say that anyone who's listening, who has um, who has the, the opportunity, mm -hmm. right? Who has the resources, who has the money mm -hmm. um, to also think about creating programs and uh, that, 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 that can lift up people as well. Because the difficulty of learning will always be there. So, you know, anyone out there who has the resources, we should always think about creating systems and programs that also have access for all people. Mm. Yeah, so that's what I would add. Yeah, great, great. 
ừ tao học tập ông chơi về sao ông lê chứ ông vừa riêng bài tập ông tiktok mà ông tạm tiktok các bạn facebook các bạn riêng share chẳng nét đại miên ở cả bạn này tao kêu sharing culture riêng cô tao chạy lê tạm để ai phơi tập bạn mà nét chơi tiktok vừa riêng nét chơi stop nét chơi chơi ăn tiktok vừa riêng nét chơi tiktok so sharing culture know little teach somebody who don't know at all and who know higher teach yes exactly sharing culture great English the last question phần thế Nowadays, according to the the real life, uh, uh, this is the the couple life. I think um, is it a proper question, like um, asking about like girlfriend, boyfriend, or mm -hmm. somebody get uh, married? Relationship, mm -hmm. relationship, yeah. And is it uh, yeah possible, yeah. right? Okay. Yes. But they um if uh, like the family or girlfriend, boyfriend, or relationship they. Uh, violence or domestic mm -hmm. violence um, is is there any dharma like teach them to motivate them not to do that mm -hmm. because i think this this uh, domestic violence is uh, around the world not only in cambodia mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh, what can we do for that uh, is there any teachings of the buddha yes yeah, so the primary teaching of the buddha is non-violence mm -hmm. all the time no violence under any circumstance right there's no justified violence there's no such thing as uh, I love you so much, and so in order to show you that I love you, I'm going to hurt you or mistreat you or abuse you. Actually, no one has the right to abuse us. No one has the right to hurt us. Your parents are not allowed to abuse you. Your boyfriend or husband or wife or your teachers, no one is allowed to abuse you. No one has that right, right? Uh, even, you know, uh, uh, we have to be very, very careful sometimes uh, because society tells us, you know, that it's okay for this person to hit you because they love you. That's how they express their feelings of love. But actually, if someone's abusing you, you have to actually finish the relationship. That's the truth about it. There's a lot of pressure in society to keep people together, but that's wrong, actually. There's a lot of things in society that are wrong. Society tells us to do drugs. Society tells us to be selfish. Society tells us to have hoard a lot of things like money and possessions. All those things are actually wrong, but society teaches us. Society teaches us to go to war. And kill people mm. so just because society says to do something doesn't mean that it's right it just means that everyone is agreeing to do wrong things so to stay in an abusive relationship is wrong yeah sometimes maybe in the beginning you just need to assert yourself and say no this is enough enough is enough other times maybe you have to leave and completely end the relationship and if things are very dangerous maybe you need to talk to the authorities right court or police or someone to help you or your friends uh, we shouldn't be scared to do the right thing right even though there's a lot of pressure from society especially for couples they tell the women right like oh don't get divorced or don't do this mm. and the husband's beating her all the time that's easy for them to say because they're not the ones getting hit <laughs> right yes that's very easy for them to say but if someone's abusing you and your children are seeing that your children are also learning to abuse uh, other people too so in the future they're gonna also hit their partners so maybe you don't have the bravery to do it for yourself as a as a woman or as a partner but think about the people who are watching if you allow yourself to get abused everyone around you thinks like oh this is the right thing to do right so the next generation will also learn that we need to stop this like uh, generational trauma mm -hmm. and say no we have to learn to say no and i know it's more difficult in asian culture to say no Right? <laughs> Everything, yes, can I do for you? Yes, 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 because more like group thinking, community, right? Interconnectedness. Uh, but not all interconnectedness is good. Sometimes interconnectedness can be very bad, right? <laughs> it, pe there's some people who abuse the system, right? It's supposed to be a beautiful system of everyone helping each other. But some people take advantage of the system uh, to hurt others, and we have to be able to say no. But it's very clear in the teachings of the Buddha that. There is no violence, verbal or physical, nothing, nothing at all. Under any circumstances, no one is allowed to hurt you. So we have to remember this, that no one has the right to hurt us, not even us. Mm -hmm. We don't have the right to hurt ourselves either, right? Because all beings want happiness. All beings want to be healthy and secure. Mm. So sometimes, it, I know it's very difficult and it's scary to tell this and assert yourself and do what you need to do. Mm. But that's part of the teachings of the Buddha that we need to do what's difficult like studying, right? And doing your, and going to work, these things are difficult. Also, standing up against people who are abusing us is, is scary and it's difficult and there's a lot of pressure, but 
we need to do the difficult things. We need to do the hard things, if not for ourselves, for to change the society and to help mm. the future. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I got the point, like uh, non-violence, Dhamma. You have no right to hurt the other people. Uh, the other people have no right to hurt you, like uh, uh, physical and verbal action. Mm. So, for example, uh, you have no right to hurt me, but I have right to hurt you now. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you and me, we have no right to, mm -hmm. to hurt like verbal and physical action. Mm -hmm. This is very important. Uh, mm -hmm. But nowadays, we sometimes we do not use physical body, we do not use speech, but we mm -hmm. use social media. Social media. Mm -hmm. Right, like this comment, oh, wow. hurtful comment, mm -hmm. and some. So, you have no right to hurt the other people by, by many ways, by yeah. any way, not only verbal or physical. Mm -hmm. Facebook shows or comment, <laughs> something like this. Very important. Chris, I have a, one question because you have a, uh, yeah, um, have you experienced like you are angry with uh, your partner or what? Uh, yes. What, 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 sh what should you do? What you, oh, I mean, good point. Right. What yeah. can you share? Like, for example, you have uh, you are angry. Or yes. Can yes. you share? Yes. 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 How can you deal with that? Yeah, you know what? First, I'll start with uh, I'm very lucky because my wife is a relationship coach. Oh. So she actually teaches people how to have wow. a healthy relationship. Oh. So I'm very lucky. Yeah. <laughs> I asked the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, right. just kidding. But what my wife, uh, what I, what the relationship we have is very safe because. Um, we accept that we will be angry sometimes mm -hmm. you know it's not about never being angry because mm -hmm. sometimes we are angry and sometimes uh, we try our best but we might say something hurtful mm. and what happens is um we give each other some space mm. oh. and what happens is uh well we 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 try not to also get angry on top of that you know we don't react with more anger and the mm. other person reacts with even more anger and it gets worse and worse and worse. Yeah. So um, sometimes I will get angry mm -hmm. and I'll say something that is hurtful. Mm. And then she will give some space. There will be some <laughs> silence. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, and like mm. she doesn't just react right away. And then she gives me some time to kind of cool down. And I, I also try to cool down because I realized that I said something Ooh, hurtful. Yeah. Um, and then she will be honest with me like what Bonte said earlier about saying no mm. you know she will hold that boundary mm. she will say in a very calm way that mm. hey what you said really hurt me mm. you know she will say that to me mm. and then also I have to practice again not <laughs> to get angry at that you know mm. I can't defend myself I have to listen to her mm. like oh okay yeah. I'm 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 sorry you know I have to learn how to apologize mm. so we give each other that space where we try not to react and get mm. even angrier. Mm -hmm. And then we try to talk about it <clears throat> in a very calm way. And then in the end, you know, I can see very clearly what I've done mm. and we make peace. So yeah. it doesn't get worse, okay. you know? So we always try to practice this process. Yeah. Now maybe better, but uh, before when you, in the past, not, not yet become a monk mm -hmm. or right now or whatever, uh, so what, what do you do when you feel sad or I mean in the yeah. before or right now whatever yeah right now uh, I haven't really felt too sad you know even though about eight people family members and close friends since I became a monk have died like my godmother my grandma uh, my cousin my brother one of my best friends my teacher Almost every year since I've been a monk, someone has died. But I haven't really been sad. I've, I've been lucky enough to have good teachers and understand the Dhamma where I don't really feel sad. Mm. Uh, but before, yes, I yeah. feel sad all the time, <laughs> very strongly. And what worked for me is like uh, going for a long walk or going for a long drive. So when I felt sad, instead of trying to fight it or distract myself, I let myself be with the sadness. Like I'm going to find time to actually see and understand the sadness. So I'd go for a long walk, you know, <laughs> like two or three hours. I'd go just walking any direction. Mm -hmm. And during that time, I feel the sadness. I let it come, you know, mm -hmm. and I experience it because many people, they don't like that feeling. It's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So they go drink or let's go dance to the movies or let's play video games or let me get on my phone <laughs> or they want someone to tell them nice things, right? Like it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. But 
you're running away from the sadness. Oh. Don't run away. Yeah. Don't try to hide it. You have to process, right? Mm -hmm. You have to go through this process. So I would go walking, and I was lucky. I always had a car ever since I was a teenager. So when I would feel really sad, especially at night, I get in my car and I'll drive out out of the city into nature, into the desert. And just drive, 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 maybe for an hour, and then come back again another hour. And during that time, no music, actually. Mm -hmm. Just being with the sadness, and I understand it. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to overcome it fast, right? Because I was facing it. Mm -hmm. I was facing my sadness. I was facing my fear. I was facing my pain. Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes our pain lasts too long, or our sadness lasts a long time, because we're trying to always hide it. We don't want to deal with it, right? It's like if, if your house is full of trash, Instead of cleaning the trash, mm -hmm. you just like cover things, but you never clean your house. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. every time you come back home, the trash is there mm -hmm. because you never cleaned it. And again, you're bothered. Mm -hmm. It's not until you clean your house that the trash will be gone and you'll be happy. So the same thing with your sadness. It's not until you face it. You have to face it, confront it and be with it and not try to distract yourself. And then you'll be able to overcome it. And for me, it was through walking and through driving that I was able to find that kind of comfort and understanding with my sadness. Mm. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. everything. ຈັ່ງປ້ອງອັດເຊົ້າແຊດເດີ້ຖ້າຕາມໄປປ້ອງບູມາມີຕັ້ງຄູຕັ້ງບັດໄດ້ທໍຕັ້ງໂດນສະ
Mm. And also, if something very bad happened in your life, that's definitely not depression. Mm. If your mom or dad died or your wife or someone and you really sad for two or three months, that's mm. not depression. That's called mm. grief. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And grief is natural, you know? If right now someone comes and tells me that my mom died, I'm going to feel some grief, you know? It's natural. Everyone feels that. Uh, disappointment also. Being disappointed is not depression. Mm. Maybe you don't get good grades. Maybe you don't go to the university that you want to and you feel disappointed and sad, right? That's not depression. Mm. Depression is when you can no longer live your life normally, mm. right? Something's happened and now you can't go to work. You can't go to school. Mm. You don't want to eat. You can't sleep. You're feeling sick. That is depression, right? You might feel real, real sadness, deep sadness, a lot of pain, but that's not depression. Mm -hmm. That's called deep sadness, <laughs> a lot of pain, yeah. right? So depression means when you can no longer function, mm -hmm. right? Something's happened. You can't do anything anymore, mm -hmm. right? And here's a misunderstanding about suicide too, especially for men. Mm -hmm. Many men who commit suicide, I think close to half, are not even depressed. They don't have depression. Mm -hmm. They don't have sadness. Mm -hmm. It's usually they feel too much pressure. Mm -hmm. So for men, especially when they're under too much pressure or they feel hopeless, like there's nothing I can do with this life, they'll tend to start thinking more suicidal thoughts because what's the point of living, right? Mm. What's the point of this? So actually depression and suicide don't, are not together all the time. Mm. A lot of time for men, uh, the uh, suicide comes from not having any, any options. They think I have no options in this life. Mm. It's better to end my life, right? Mm. So those are some different things. Uh, Women in general, you know, girls uh, tend uh, to fall into depression more than men. So that is a true. It's more likely that a, that a woman will feel depressed uh, than men, right? And it's more likely also that women will have suicidal thoughts and try suicide more than men. But uh, men are more likely to actually be successful in suicide, right? Mm. And that's because of the, what they call aggression factor. When men do try to commit suicide, they'll grab a gun, they'll go to a bridge, they'll do something very violent mm. where it's very likely that they are going to die. Mm. But when women try to commit suicide, it's usually in a soft way, like take pills or mm -hmm. try to drown themselves in the bathtub, right? Mm -hmm. And they're not successful at the suicide, <laughs> right? They don't end up Gentle doing suicide. it. suicide. <laughs> yeah. They tried, but they couldn't do it, you know? Okay. Okay. So that's the difference between the male and, and female uh, rates of suicide and why suicide happens but yes let's not confuse sadness even if it's very deep painful sadness with depression that's some depression and sadness are not the same thing okay also grief you know if you, you lost someone that you love or maybe someone you find out has cancer and you feel very sad that's also not depression mm -hmm. depression means you can no longer live the life you want to live right and sometimes that has sadness right mm -hmm. sometimes that has even anxiety anxiety comes with with depression right mm -hmm. But most of the time it has to do, you notice, because you feel very tired, you feel very sick, you can't sleep well, you're not going to school, you're not going to work, uh, you don't have like meaning in your life, mm. what's the point of doing all these things? Those are more likely to be signs of depression okay. than feeling pain, mm. you know, disappointment. I think a lot of times okay. we confuse disappointment and sadness and grief with depression. Mm. And if you experience long enough, maybe one or two years of sadness, it can lead to depression because you'll say, what's the point of being alive if I'm always sad? Right, then, then you start going into depression. But uh, yeah, so I, I just want to let everyone know that being sad is normal. Even if it hurts, mm. everyone gets sad, mm -hmm. right? Feeling grief is also normal. Everyone feels grief, right? Uh, feeling disappointed. Maybe I didn't get the grades I wanted. Mm. I didn't get into the university. That person doesn't love me in return. I, love, I told <laughs> them that I love them, but they didn't say anything, right? <laughs> yeah. That hurts. I know it hurts. But that's not depression. That's you know? not depression. That's not depression. That's something different. So I think we have to be careful with our words. Because on social media, everyone's putting depression. Yeah. No one knows what it means. They're, okay. What they're trying to say is that I have a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. That's right. You do have a lot of pain. We mm -hmm. can't deny that. That's mm -hmm. the truth. But let's be careful and not say depression. Just be honest and mm -hmm. say, I'm in a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best thing to say. Yeah. So what, what can we deal with the depression, real depression? Mm -hmm. What can we deal with that one? So the best thing actually they found is community. Okay. When uh, you're in community, that's the number one protective factor. Actually, community helps for almost everything. <laughs> when, you feel, when you're alone or you feel alone, everything becomes more difficult, 
right? Even doing your homework. If you have no support from your community because they were difficult. Mm. Uh, so the most important thing is to have a group of people that you can trust. Mm. That's the most important thing. They call it a protective factor. Something that protects you from going deeper or even from feeling depressed in the mm. beginning. Mm. But uh, what about if you don't have a community, right? And you're already feeling depressed. You should go look for help. Mm. The, the sooner you go look for help, the more likely you are to recover. The people who don't look for help, unfortunately, most people wait six months, a year, two years before they get help for their depression. Mm. And by that time, that pattern that happens in the brain uh, gets reinforced. It becomes very strong. So it's very difficult then to overcome your depression because you've been letting it stay with you for so long, right? It's hard work to get rid of it after you've done it for so long. So the best advice is that as soon as you start seeing that you're not going to school, you're not sleeping well, you're not eating well, you're feeling sad, you don't have any purpose in life. At that time, maybe talk to a teacher, right? Or uh, talk to someone that you trust. I'll tell your doctor even. Sometimes doctors can help you too. So get help as fast as you can. So mm -hmm. first, community. Try to have a good uh, supporting community. And if you don't have that, or if you do have it even, try to get help as soon as you can. Get rid of your pride. Some of us have too much pride. We don't know when to ask for help. We're scared to ask for help. Get rid of your pride. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel good, ask for help. That's yeah. going to be the one of the most important things to help you mm -hmm. overcome real depression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Can you finish that one? Um, oh, actually, can I ask Bonte okay. a question yeah. as yeah. well? Yeah. Because, yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. because this topic is very important yeah, very for important. the Asian community. Mm -hmm. Because in Vietnam mm -hmm. and the Vietnamese community in the United States, it's, mm -hmm. it's the same yes. where we have a misunderstanding mm -hmm. of depression. And the culture makes it very difficult mm -hmm. for people to admit that they have problems, yeah. mm -hmm. that they need help, right? Because Bonte was saying um, that too much pride, mm -hmm. people have a lot of pride yeah. and they don't want to admit that mm -hmm. they, they need help. Mm -hmm. But also sometimes people who do admit it, people don't know how to react. Mm -hmm. People don't know how to help them. Mm -hmm. They don't know what words to use mm -hmm. when people actually have depression. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times I see my parents or older folks, mm. they will say, just get over it. <laughs> it's like, what's wrong with you? You know, or my parents will talk about like, you know, when I was younger, you know what I had to do? Mm. My life was so much more yeah, difficult yeah, yeah, than yeah. you. <laughs> so just get over it. Your problem means nothing, you know? Mm. And then so people don't ask for help because of that, mm. you know? Okay, okay. So I, I do want to ask Bonte, um, how, do, how should we respond to people who need help mm -hmm. when we're not, we're not therapists, we're not professionals. Mm -hmm. What should we do? Okay. So there's two things. Uh, number one is that we should focus on listening. Mm. Sometimes when people tell us something, we feel like we need to give advice. Actually, there's a lot of advice. People don't need advice. You know, you can go on the internet. Everyone's always giving you their opinion. We don't need to give another opinion. Everyone has so many opinions. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when someone comes to you with a, with a problem, just stay quiet. Mm -hmm. Listen. Listen to them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Try to take away your own personal opinions from the situation. And just be there for them. This mm -hmm. is very difficult for them to share their pain. Because there's a lot of pride and stigma, taboos in society that make it difficult for someone to be honest and say mm -hmm. their pain. Mm -hmm. So when someone finally shares their pain, right, their difficulty, we need to just listen and be quiet. Mm. Yes, you're in pain. Yes, I, I understand. This is difficult. The person will say, what can I do? Say, Let's look for help together. That's the second step. The second step oh. is to help the person get help because they'll be scared to get help, right? Okay. First one is to listen. Only listen. Don't talk. Mm. Don't tell them it's going to be okay. It's mm. not going to be okay. We don't know that. <laughs> mm -hmm. How do you know it's going to be okay? Yeah. You don't know. Get over it, right? That's like telling someone who's hungry, Stop being hungry. <laughs> Just stop being hungry. Well, I haven't ate food. Stop. Don't worry about that. Just don't be hungry. <laughs> that, does, that doesn't take away the hunger. I need to eat something, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we don't want to say it's going to be okay or just get over it. Okay. Those things don't work. Our job as a friend is to listen. We're not the doctor. We're not the therapist. Our job is just to be a friend. And a friend is there for you when you're in pain. Mm. Maybe you can hug them, right, mm. or something like that. Mm. Uh, take care of them, feed them, and do these things. And then the next step is to encourage them to get help. 
from a therapist, from a doctor, from a counselor, from someone else to get help. Mm. That is our job as friends, mm. right? The people who are responsible for for helping that person overcome depression is one, the person in depression or sadness or whatever problem they have, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're responsible. Mm. And the second person is the professional, right? The, the doctor, the therapist, or sometimes maybe even a very senior monk, you know, someone who has a lot of life experience, a good yes. meditator. They're the people together with the person in pain, not us around. Mm -hmm. Everyone else around here, our job is to support, Good right? We'll support you in this process. You can do it. Just like when you go to school, only I can study for myself. You can't study for me. I won't learn if you study, right? But you can support me in my studying, right? You can help me do my laundry. You can give me food. You can get me the books. You can tell me, go to school. That's good to go to school. You go, you go mm -hmm. and support me. So when people have these mental health issues, our job is also to support just like someone's going to school and make sure they go to the right place, right? Uh, so those are the two things that we can do. One is listen. Don't talk. Don't say anything. Just listen. <laughs> and the other one is to help them get the help that they need. Bye. Uh, maybe lunch time. <laughs> 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 uh, Just don't be time. hungry. Don't be hungry. <laughs> don't be hungry. We need to <laughs> <laughs> Okay, my no. one, I just survived it. And so I'm very happy to have a, in my life, this is the first time for me to get a very good idea and very uh, fresh environment mm -hmm. and get a good idea. So, uh, and thank you so much, Bante, uh, Chris, thank you so much uh, for your time. And let's uh, uh, continue to Banan Mountain. So, thank you, thank you, Bante. Okay. okay. Uh, before I finish, how can you say my word, one my word to the people? Uh, you remember, whatever. Very clear. Very clear. you have any word in Khmer? One or two words? Oh, I can't remember right now. Like good boy. Oh, yeah, what was that? Loa. 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 Good. Loa. 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 Yes, yes. Loa. I don't want to tell my age. So, only one word. Loa is enough. Loa. Good. Good is enough. So, thank you, Vandek. Thank you.